Hi guys, welcome back. Yours truly a broken down making here. No words needed. I think the thumbnail and the title are self-explanatory. Let's just get to it. Maybe you do need a little info to how we discovered the situation and I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Please bear with me. My husband was headed to an international conference of St. Kitts and asked me for a plug converter. My career took me all over the world and I have one really for every corner of the world. Kept them all in a bottom drawer where I stored all my model career photos. Take note. I am slightly on the mature side and started modeling before digital and analog photos were processed in chemicals in a dark room. Over time, they can mold. I saw evidence of mold and spent the entire week he was gone trying to clean and rescue my photos. Of course, with many, it was unfortunately not possible. I had a feeling it was not just contained to that drawer and not just because of the chemicals. But my birthday was in a couple of weeks and we were going to New York for 10 days. You know what they say, out of sight, out of mind. I didn't want to deal with it. We are talking about seven meters, almost 22 feet of closet units. But after New York, we started taking the closet units down. Yeah, it looked like the mold stopped after the first four units, but I would get the rest of my surprise later. First thing in hand was to remove the paintable raw fiber wallpaper with a dissolving solution. Remember in my bedroom makeover video, I explained that it was commonly used in these parts, um, but a definite downfall is it can hold moisture and breed mold. I consulted Raphael, the husband of my husband's secretary, Kati. He is a profi and supplied me with the best products for this removal and repair. All advice on every step I took and given this video is from him. So that's why the title says like a professional. I know I am not one, but I was under the strict guidance of one. The next day, Rafi had time to help me. Uh, remove the rest of the wallpaper. In the meantime, we needed to discover why the wall was so wet. My apartment is the top apartment and that wall is an outside wall where the eaves of the roof are. It was not airtight anymore through wear, tear and age. Wind was blowing, rain and snow up under and into the wall. These old buildings are brick and mortar. I mean, like thick 60 centimeter walls. It never got a chance to completely dry out before the next rain or snow and the moisture just built up. Who only knows how long this was building up? Fortunately, they got a crew in immediately to start repairs. Rafi and I removed all wallpaper on the inner outside wall and even though the wall separating the hall and the bathroom was not affected, I took it all off to the corner of the front door, the whole left hallway side. And we removed the floor molding, which was also affected from the mold. Now the mold removal. I had to generously spray the whole wall. Please do not rub it in. You don't want to push the spores further into the porous wall. Okay, you may think, but Macon, the whole wall is wet. What about mold inside the wall? The wall is not hollow and mold is a plant that needs air. So it was only contained to the surface to a particular depth. Just spray and let it dry three or four hours and go in and spray again. You want to keep treating until all discoloration or evidence of mold is completely gone. Some believe if the initial black is gone and maybe just a little brown, gray, or sometimes greenish color is left, that that is enough. And that it may only just be the stain from the mold. No, no, no. There could still be mold spores there. Treat at least three to four times 
or more if necessary. After this process, the wall needed to completely dry out and for at least a week before I could continue. Roof repairs were being finished and steps being made to help the wall dry out from the outside part out. So hey, we just packed our bags, grabbed the dogs and went skiing and snowboarding. Okay, the mountains, here we come. But of course, it was only a temporary break. I had to come back home to reality. Okay, now we're ready for the next phase of working on this wall. I apologize for the hazy lighting, but as you see, I am working in a plastic bubble here. I'm trying to prevent extra dust traveling to the other parts of the apartment because now I need to sand the wall. I need to sand off some of these flaking pieces of plaster where it's a little bit more chunky and more is flaking off. I'm probably gonna use a 40 sandpaper, um, a little bit of the more finer parts that it's just uh, not so flaky, but it's still a little loose. I'm going to probably use an 80. And then afterwards I need to go in with a um, teeth, teeth, I'm speaking German to you. Then afterwards I need to go in with a deep activating base coat on the cement wall. As, as you see, the cement has crumbled out in some parts and I am going to have to fill that in, spachel that, and that deep penetrating base helps the spachel to really adhere to the cement. So later on, it does and start to separate from the wall and those patched areas will crumble out or crumble off. So um, yeah, let's get to work. Woo! Don't worry, I ended up putting on a mask. The deep penetrating base product is very toxic. So please wear gloves. Next, I had to fill in with plaster or spachel the deeper holes in the wall, followed with sanding again. Then again, plastering for the fine finishes, and again, sanding the complete wall with 120 grit sandpaper. I also took the time to fill in the ceiling lamp holes, which were never done very properly, just using some drywall tape and plastering over it. They were basically covered up with the current lamp mounts, but what if I ever changed the lamps? Okay, now time for the first painting. Using a very generous amount of anti-mold base paint, assuring the first prevention step so the mold has less likely of a chance of returning. Look you guys, the wall is taking form, starting to look halfway normal again. Next is further prevention. You see that there were spaces or holes where the wall and floor met that could allow outside moisture to come through again. We needed to seal them using a silicone caulking. First, silicone is already a blocker for moisture, but this particular silicone is also a mold blocker with a guarantee of at least five years. has ingredients that can truly kill the first presence of mold. Now to save the floor molding. They took a beating from the mold remover. I started with removing caulking rest and cleaned with my favorite wood cleaner and parquet floor conditioner. Next was solving the puzzle of where the floor molding originally was and getting them nailed back secure. Guys, please don't laugh at me but this was a struggle bus to the nth degree. But in the end, I won that battle.
like five times in a row. <laughs> and then sealed the top and bottom of the floor molding with the same mold blocking silicone. Better extra safe than sorry. While I was at it, I decided to replace and repair a corner of floor molding that one of my pups used as a chew toy when he was a baby. And lastly, I applied two coats of a semi-matte clear lacquer on the baseboards to bring them totally back to their pre-mold glory, including the newly repaired corner. Okay guys, I am stopping this part of the catastrophe here. All basic renovations were complete. I had been working on this wall since around nine weeks and your girlfriend needed a break before I started on the aesthetic renovations which required everything, meaning the rest of the furniture and around 50 pieces of art and photography to be removed. I now needed to paint the, um, the complete hallway, which wraps around and continues the whole length of the apartment. I took a two week vacation in Italy and shortly after was my best friend's birthday and we took a girl's trip to Marrakesh. I would just deal with that when I got home. And that is where the next video will continue. Plus, I wanted to give it a little time. I wanted to make sure the roof repairs were totally solid. Could you just imagine me having to start all over again from scratch after painting and decorating everything? I would have totally lost it. My patience was already at the wit's end and anyone who knows me knows I did not come into this world with much patience to start with. Okay, you guys, let me know if anything like this has happened to you. Please don't leave me here alone on an isolated island. And if you have any further tips and suggestions for others here, please leave them down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it was very um, uh, tragic, <laughs> and that you take some pertinent information away with you. And as always, yours truly, Heart Megan. <sighs> That was almost therapeutic talking about it again. I must say the last couple of days going through that film material, mm -hmm. looking at what we dealt with, I was almost re-traumatized. Oh, I'm glad that's over with. But hey, I'm trying to stay positive.